very trying. <laughs> Well, good afternoon, everyone, good afternoon. and welcome to Cropwell Bishop Methodist Church on this very special and significant occasion. My name is Reverend Tim Morris. I'm the uh, new superintendent minister of the circuit and also have the privilege of being the minister here of this chapel. It's lovely to see uh, friends from the village, from the parish church, uh, from the Methodist circuit and, and others as well who've gathered here and relatives of those who gave the land <coughs> for the chapel to be built in the first place. So we're very, very grateful. Uh, as long as you haven't come to uh, <laughs> claim, it claim it back, we don't mind. <laughs> Have a word later, okay. <laughs> Give him an extra slice of cake, there we go, so that's fine. So let us remember, we have come here uh, in sadness, yes. We haven't come here, uh, well, maybe we've come here to mourn, but we've come here to give thanks above all things, to be grateful people to remember those who have gone before us and to find God's strength and blessing and direction as we move forward as well. So let us just hold a moment and then I'll lead us in our order of service that you've got with you. In Christ we are joined together and grow into the holy temple of the Lord. In Christ we are built together into the dwelling place of God. We join together as we sing our opening hymn, To God be the glory, great things he has done.
please be seated. We come here today to give thanks and to remember and to celebrate the life and the ministry and the mission of our church here in this village. Uh, this Methodist church presence came to the village very many years ago in the early 1800s when a license was given for uh, someone to hold worship in their home and then that license was given to a barn in someone's uh, uh, garden and then uh, also in a chapel that was built. And finally, our present chapel built in 1842 uh, from funds raised in the village and purchased uh, from Owen's great-great-grandfather, Mr. Bell of Hickling, including two cottages. He's now come to ask for the rent, but there we go. <laughs> Not sure we can go back 180 years, but we'll try. And then, of course, the chapel was remodelled in the late 1800s, uh, and the chapel was also the, the Sunday school was then built in uh, from the cottages, and the uh, original pews were used for the panelling in the side of the chapel. But probably all did you all know that? No, uh, yeah. <laughs> So we come to give thanks and to celebrate and to remember, but also to find courage for our Methodist community here as to how we can still have a presence here in this community and this area, although we may not have the chapel with us always. So, on the order of service for our prayers, let us pray. Eternal God, creator of time and space, beginning and ending of all things, you have been with us in all that is past. To you be glory forever. Loving God, saviour of the world, the way, the truth and the life, you are with us as we gather to get today. To you be glory forever. Sustaining God, spirit of renewal and inspirer of faith, you will be with us as we go from this place. To you be glory forever. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are with us always. To you be glory forever. Sisters and brothers, as we meet to worship God, giving thanks for all that God has done in this place, let us call to mind our own sin. Loving God, when we have followed our own desires and failed to proclaim your love, Lord, forgive us. Generous God, when we have lived for our own needs and failed to embody your generosity, Lord, forgive us. Transforming God, when we have loved our own comforts and failed to hear your call, Lord, forgive us. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. This is Christ's gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. Lord God, whose son was made the cornerstone of a temple made of living stones, as we move on from this place, may we so live our lives that they might shout aloud of your grace and love through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now Roger is going to read our first reading. Reading from the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 to 14. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, 
a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the busyness that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time, moreover. He has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has done this so that all should stand in awe before him. Thanks be to God.
be seated as Steve Gelsthorpe comes to read our next reading. The second reading this afternoon comes from chapter 1 of Peter's first letter to the Christians, beginning to read at verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now, for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Here endeth the lesson. It is my privilege to be here this afternoon to share in this act of worship at this time and in this season to assure you of the love and the prayers and the support of the Nottingham and Derby district as Cropwell Bishop Methodist Church comes towards the end of its life together. I invite us then to reflect on scripture. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your word of life, which we find here in the scripture that you have given us. We pray that by reading it and reflecting upon it, we may meet again even the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord, and commit our way to him. In his name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, I wonder how you enjoy passing your spare time, what little you might have of it. Among the many things I enjoy doing with my spare time, I enjoy reading, reading a good book. I've often read biographies. See, the lives of people interest me. I'm fascinated to learn what inspires them and drives them on. I've often read biographies of Christian people and others, and the histories of Christian groups and organisations. There we find a lot of inspiration for the journey of life. And I must give thanks to Tim for the copy of Methodism in Cropwell Bishop, which he gave to me the other day, which I've yet to finish. More often than not, when we're reading biographies or books of that kind, we might find in the back cover these Latin words, Deo gratia, thanks be to God. Today, I think, we gather here to reflect together and to say thanks be to God for the life, mission and witness of this place and the people who have made it what it has been down the years. We reflect on the women and men of this chapel and fellowship who have enjoyed the fellowship here, who have prayed together, who have served our God and been a Christian presence here in Cropwell Bishop. Since its first beginnings as a Methodist movement here in this village in Mr. Hopewell's house, the people of Cropwell Bishop Methodist Fellowship 
have met to offer their worship, to be inspired for Christian service, to be inspired for witness to the Lord Jesus Christ here in this community. And in this very place, opened in 1842, finding a space in which to meet, to focus on God, offering a welcome, giving caring support and prayerful time apart from the ordinary things of life, meeting in the name of God. passage of scripture which we just heard read for us from the first epistle of Peter was written to early Christians. If you read the first few verses you'll find that it was written to Christians wherever they happened to meet as God's people. Peter's letters to the early Christians were a source of encouragement for faith and hope for the future. He could well have entitled them Deo Grazia, thanks be to God for his people gathered wherever they may be. So today, as we meet at the close of a chapter of the history of this place, I'd like to suggest that we may also want to say thanks be to God for it. In the words of St Peter on this Advent Sunday, we can say thanks be to God for the living hope which Peter points us to, which is ours in Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. It was Bob Dylan who sang in the late 1960s these words, the times they are a-changing. I'm just too young to remember him singing it. <laughs> And with the change of times, of course, there comes a change of attitudes, a change of needs. Such changes in life are inevitable and bring with them moments of sadness, moments of difficulty, as well as reflections which may well lead us to happy memories and thanksgivings. All of that we find among us here today. The writer of the book of Ecclesiastes reminds us that life's pattern brings with it seasons and times which have different needs. Changing times for us today inevitably bring for you a moment of sadness as you recall the good times shared here. The moments of prayerful reflection which have been held here. You will have a sense of loss when you remember members who've moved to other places or indeed have taken their place in the glory of heaven. Today, you will have many thoughts and feelings welling up within as we say together, thanks be to God for Cropwell Bishop Methodist Church and all that it has been and all that it has offered to this community down the years. However, we must follow the lead of St Peter in his letter. He tells us not to stand accused of fixing our minds on earthly things. Rather, let us give thanks to God for the things of faith which nothing can take away. The hope of God's presence, the knowledge of God's grace, the experience of God's love, which remain with us as we journey on to new ventures and new seasons. The living hope of Christian faith, which depends not on the existence of a particular place, but on the assurance of God's presence, the God who journeys with us, whatever life may bring, in whatever season we find ourselves. The living hope, which Peter urges you and I to rely upon, is rooted in God himself through Christ our Lord and in the power of his spirit, which he freely gives. These friends, things, friends, can never be taken away. So let us look back with thanksgiving and look forward 
to what God calls us to be and to do in this next season, which is unfolding under the leadership and guidance of your minister, Tim, and the wider Grantham and Vale of Beaver Circuit, guided and directed by God and his Holy Spirit. And secondly, from the passage, I'd like to point us to verse 4, in which St Peter speaks of this. The inheritance which can never perish, spoil or fade, which is kept in heaven for you. You see, the Christian has much more to thank God for. Despite the passage of time and history and the sadnesses, the difficulties and indeed the joys we experience, God promises each one who loves him a place with him in the glory of heaven. This is the Christian hope, and this is the message we still have to share, that all are welcome in the feast of God's kingdom. All are called to share in his hope and his love. It is a message which never fades or spoils or changes. In our lives, friends, you know as well as I do, there are constant comings and goings. Like the tides of the sea, the incoming tide brings new ideas, fresh hopes, fresh dreams, whilst the outgoing tide washes away the things which need to be taken away. History proves the truth of scripture, which reminds us what the writer of Ecclesiastes says. There is a time for everything, a time to be born and a time to die. A time to rejoice and a time to mourn. There's a time for everything. So today, we reflect on the history of this little chapel. As we give thanks for all that it has offered, we rejoice in every memory treasured. Yet we are faced with the reality that its season has come to an end, and we now look to the future whatever that may bring. We look forward with our God, with his spirit in our hearts, and with the love of Christ to share. No doubt with some sadness, but not without hope. And the ultimate hope of receiving that inheritance which Peter speaks of, which God has in store for everyone who loves him. So the challenge is, not to remain here with our gaze on past glories, great though inevitably they may have been. We are called to rejoice in our living hope from God, the inheritance we have from him, and find new ways in new places to share that hope with others. As the old hymn puts it, onward, ever onward, journeying o'er the road worn by saints before us, journeying on to God, leaving all behind us, may we hasten on, backward never looking, till the prize is won. So thanks be to God for Cropwell Bishop Methodist Church and Fellowship, its life, its mission and ministry, which has offered that very living hope to many down the years, as we walk into the future in faith and living hope, building on what God has shared here in the past and going on with God to guide and lead us forward. In our hearts, we say Deo Grazia. Thanks be to God. Shall we pray? He offer us a moment of silence as we reflect on God's word, as maybe we give thanks for memories of this place which have come to mind, and as we commit ourselves to following God into his future. Gracious God, we pray that you would assure us of the living hope that we have in Jesus Christ, even as we give thanks for this place. Help us to look forward with you, knowing that you call us to a glorious future, washed by your love 
and assured of your presence and grace. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. It is Jesus, the first and the last, whose spirit shall guide us safe home. We'll praise him for all that is past and trust him for all that's to come. If you're able, please stand as we sing the hymn, This, This is the God We Adore. So let us pray. Let us pray to the Father through the Son in the power of the Spirit. Living God, your Spirit came as wind and fire upon the apostles, bringing the church to birth and empowering it for mission and service. Pour out your Spirit on all who seek your will, on all gathered here on the churches of our circuit and this area. May we be blessed anew for the work you have set before us. O Lord, the giver of life, receive our prayer. Loving God, through the breath of your being, you brought all creation to birth. Pour out your spirit on all the nations and their leaders. May all people be inspired into ways of justice and peace, that the hungry may be fed, the homeless find a welcome, and the oppressed be brought to liberty and fullness of life. O Lord, the giver of life, receive our prayer. Living God, you anointed your Son, Jesus Christ, to bring sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf and healing to the sick and the sorrowing. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all those who suffer, those who are filled with anxiety and all who need our prayers. May they know your comfort and grace. O Lord, the giver of life, receive our prayers. Living God, you raised Christ from the dead. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us as we rejoice in that which has been, grieve at that which will be lost, and look in hope for what is yet to come. May we know the assurance of eternal life and the strength of the fellowship of all the saints. O Lord, the giver of life, receive our prayer. Amen. And as our Saviour taught his disciples, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so we join together as we stand to, to sing our next hymn, 503, in Singing the Faith. Love divine, all loves excelling, 
joy of heaven to earth come down. joy and delight and it was lovely that the choir offered to come and sing for us our joint churches choir and so they're now going to lead us in worship as they sing may the road rise to meet us
Welcoming God, we give thanks for all those who have encountered your presence in this place, for all those who have discovered your love shown to us through Jesus Christ, God of hospitality, we give you our thanks. Transforming God, we give you thanks for those who have entered the church through the waters of baptism, for those who have received the gift of new life through the promise of the Holy Spirit. We give you our thanks. Uniting God, we give thanks for all who have stood before you and pledged themselves to each other for new relationships celebrated and new families created. God of joy, we give you our thanks. As we stand by the war memorial, and remember also those who have gone before us. Comforting God, we give thanks for all who have joined the company of heaven, whose memory we still cherish, whose love still inspires us. God of peace, we give you our thanks. <coughs> Inspiring God, we give thanks for your living word proclaimed from this place over the generations your word that informs our thinking and motivates our living. And for all those who have preached in this place, God of grace, we give you our thanks. Encouraging God, we give thanks for the worship that has been offered here for the ways in which your praise has been proclaimed and your love lifted high in our hearts and for all those who have enabled worship in this place God of celebration we give you thanks and here at this table Tangible God, we give thanks for all the ways in which you have, you have come to us and for your means of grace made known especially through the gifts of bread and wine, your body and your blood. God of love, we, we give you our thanks. So thank you all for coming and standing with us here in this village today as we come in celebration for all that this chapel and this place of worship means to us and for all the lives who have created it and sustained it and for the lives that will move from this place in the months and the years that lie before us. You're all very welcome to join us after our service for a time of refreshment. If those who need to sit down could go down first and stay and others of us could go down if we need to come back up here with tea then please do so once again thank you to everybody that's made this afternoon possible we are very very grateful for your love and your support and your kindness and your care and so we sing our closing hymn as we sing together guide me O thou great jehovah pilgrim through this barren land
May Christ be always at your side, give you courage for the journey, and be your goal and your joy. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We go in peace, for God's Spirit dwells in us. We will be a temple of God wherever we go. Amen. Amen. Amen.